places nowadays have four or five strings, but that wasn't always the case. Up until the late 1800s, basses had three strings and usually the bottom string would be tuned to about an A. Around this period, composers wanted to hear more lower notes and they experimented with adding a fourth string and then even a fifth string. The low notes on the double bass are what we really love to play. They can really make the ground shake. When we play children's concerts, we love to get the kids to interact with the double bass and put their hand on the front of the body or the back so that they can really hear the vibrations move through the air. Before I show you how we use an extension to play the low notes on a bass, I need to explain to you the three methods we use for changing the pitch or note of the string. And the first one is to change the string tension, which is what we do when we tune the bass. The second method is to increase the diameter of the string. A thicker string is heavier and produces a lower pitch. String manufacturers do this work for us by making the lower strings much thicker than the upper ones. Three, change the length of the string. And this is what we do with our left hand when we play. We temporarily shorten the length of the string with our fingers and the pitch goes up. So, if shortening the string makes the pitch go up, then making the string longer makes the pitch go down. And this is exactly how an extension works. So as you can see, the bottom string on my bass is much longer than the top three, which allows me to play the bottom C. The Contra C extension on my double bass was invented by a gentleman called George Fawcett. It has a thumb cam on the back to lock the E string down. Open the cam, you can play E, E flat, D, D flat, open C. The extension on my bass is often referred to as a ski slope, I guess because you could probably ski from the top down to the bottom and off again. There are two types of bow we can use. Before we explain the difference between the two, we need to talk about frogs. No, not that frog, or that one. This is the bass playing frog that lives in Stuart's garden. A bass bow consists of a stick made of Pernambuco, which is a springy wood from Brazil and the frog or the heel, which is uh, usually made of ebony. On the French bow, the frog is smaller and the wind is also shorter. On the German bow, the frog is wider and the wind is quite a bit longer. The French bow is held over the top, like so, and the German bow is held from underneath. Ich spiele eine deutsche Bogen. Bonjour et bienvenue à mon bref exposé sur l'art français. Pour les autres thèses, je vais maintenant parler anglais. The French bow was developed by French luthier Francois Tort in the early 1800s to the form it is today. Uh, it was made popular by Italian virtuoso Giovanni Bottasini. Some fun facts. The bass bow. If it was the same proportion to the instrument as the violin bow to the violin, the bass bow would be three metres long. Mine is three quarters of a metre long. In classical music, we use the bow 90% of the time and pizzicato for the remaining 10%. So the bow is really important. It produces the sound. It is our voice. So it's less important to me how a player holds the bow, but I'm really interested in what players do with the bow. Because we, in the bass section, need to be able to match sounds and make a uniform bass sound, but also be able to play the complete range of sounds and strokes required to play the music. Merci. Au